Hello and welcome to our in-depth review of Monday.com Sales CRM, a dynamic and fully customizable platform designed to optimize your sales process from end to end. Whether you're managing a small team or coordinating sales at a large enterprise, Monday.com offers a set of tools tailored to make your workflow more efficient and your team more effective. Today, we'll explore how this CRM stands out in the crowded market of sales management tools and determine whether it's the right fit for you and your business. So first things first, let's go ahead and take a look at the different pricing plans that the monday.com CRM offers. So they have four different plans. They have the basic CRM, standard CRM, pro CRM, and the enterprise CRM. Now to go ahead and toggle the yearly and monthly, we can come over here and click on monthly to see those prices increase and click on yearly to see those prices decrease. For the basic CRM on the annual plan that comes out to $12 per seat per month. The standard CRM comes out to $17 per seat per month. And the pro CRM comes out to $28 per seat per month. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the complete feature list here. So as we can see on that basic plan, you're not getting access to their lead management. So this is how you can collect, qualify and follow up with your leads all in one place. So if you want that, you're definitely going to have to get started on the standard plan. Same goes for the account and contact management, as well as the deal management. And if you're looking for a CRM, these are sort of non-negotiable. So you're probably definitely going to want to get started on at least the standard plan. The next thing to consider when looking at different options here is going to be the file storage. So on the basic plan, you only get five gigabytes of file storage. The standard plan, you get 20 gigabytes of storage and the pro plan, you get hundred gigabytes of storage. As for the activity log as well, for most of you, I'm sure that your sales cycle is more than one week. And so the basic plan, plan only keeps an activity log in there of one week. So this tracks all the changes to your work and see who changed what and when. And you only get a week of that on the basic plan. On the standard plan, you get up to six months. And on the pro plan, you get up to an entire year. So if you want to get started with the monday.com sales CRM, there is a link down in the description. Just go ahead and click that link and then follow along on screen with me here to go through the sign up process. So once you click that link, that's going to bring you to this page here and just go ahead and click get started. And you can either get started started with your Gmail account or whatever work email you have. Next is just going to ask for your full name, a password and your account name. Next is going to ask what brings you here today, whether that's work, personal, school or nonprofits. We'll go ahead and select work and what best describes your role. We'll go ahead and select business owner and hit continue. Next is just going to ask how many people are on your team and how many people work at your company. We'll go ahead and select two to 10 and 20 to 49. Next, it's going to ask what industry is your company in? We'll go ahead and just type in marketing and advertising. Advertising. And for the role, we'll go ahead and type in account executive and hit continue. So after you complete the sign up process, this is where you're going to end up. Now, if you're unfamiliar with monday.com, how it works and how to navigate it, then you're going to want to learn to start with the workspace. What we can do is we can come up here. This is the workspace. And if we click on that, we can add another workspace or browse all of our other workspaces. In this case, since we just created a new account, we only have this one workspace titled CRM. If we press these three dots over over here, you can go ahead and make any changes to your CRM. For instance, you can change the icon background color, you can change the icon itself, maybe let's go ahead and change this to a dollar sign and change the background to green because this is a CRM after all. So you could also create a new workspace for a different business, different department or different area that you just want to keep separate from this initial workspace. Alright, so below the workspace, we have these different boards here. And these are just different areas within your CRM. Now let's go ahead and start here with leads. The first question we need to ask is what is a lead? And a lead is anyone who is potentially a customer for your business, but you have yet to qualify them. Now, an easy way to remember this is that leads are typically handled by appointment setters, while deals are typically handled by closers. So we have a couple example leads in here, and we can see we have their name, we have their status here, whether it's a new lead attempted to contact, contact, qualified or unqualified. We have this create a contact button, which I'll go over in just a minute. We have the company, their title, email,
email as well as their phone number. So if we wanted to add new leads to this lead board, then there are several different ways that you can add them. You can add leads manually or import them in bulk from a spreadsheet or a CSV file. So if you wanted to add in those leads via a CSV file or spreadsheet, you go ahead and hit that little arrow here and click on import leads. And then you can drag and drop a CSV file. You can also manually enter them in here. So here we have John Doe and he is a new lead at Gotham Inc. And he is the CEO, etc. That is one way to add a lead. Another way to add a lead to your lead board is to integrate customizable forms, whether that be on your website, social media pages. And this way, leads can input their data directly into your CRM. So how we do that, there's already a form view up here. So if we click on that form, we'll just go ahead and click create your first form. And from here, we can go ahead and customize this form. So let's go ahead and choose which parts of the lead board that we want our new potential leads to see. And there's definitely going to be some things that we want to hide from them. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is change the status. So we don't want this to be seen by our new potential leads. And we know that this is hidden because it says this question is hidden on form. We'll let them input their company, we'll let them input their title, email, and phone number. And then from here, what we're going to do is we're going to go to customize and we're going to go to form restrictions. Make sure that this require submitters to log in is unchecked. That way anyone can fill this out, not just people within your monday.com account. And lastly, we'll come down here to monday.com settings and we can select which group we want it to go to. Right now, we just have new leads. So we'll go ahead and select that. But we could also come back here and maybe these are our new leads. And maybe we have a new group for qualified leads. And so if we come back to the form, come to edit it, customize, go to monday.com settings, and then we can see we have those different options. But we want these new leads to come into this new leads group. So from here, we go ahead and hit publish. And let's go ahead and just open that up and just show you how this form works and how it'll spit that information out into your lead board. And if we come back here to our lead board, come back to main table, we can see that that new lead is now in our lead board. Now, another way to get leads in here is through integration. So you can also integrate with other tools that your business might already have in place to capture leads into your database. So to do that, you just click on integrate right here and find whatever integration your team is currently using to connect that to this board. So you can also add any other columns in here that makes sense. For example, maybe you're a sales manager and you want to assign these different leads to your different reps. So what you could do is you could come here, hit this plus sign, select owner. That way you can come in here and select different people within your team and assign them to these leads to go ahead and work these new leads to determine if they're qualified or not. Now within each lead, we can go ahead and open these up. So if we hover to the right of any item lead here, we can go ahead and click open. And this is going to open up that specific lead. So here you can see where they fall on the status as the lead, whether they're a new lead, you've attempted to contact them, they're contacted, or they have been qualified. So you can also send emails directly from here if you've hooked up your email through the monday.com CRM. Now there's also a section under updates where you can add any updates for your team to see and you can tag them there by typing the at sign. We can come here to the update section, write an update and say, I know this person personally let me work them or something like that. And then this starts an update log here within this specific lead. Now here you can also click qualified or unqualified. So let's go ahead and click qualified. And then that automatically changes the status to qualified. If we hit reopen that go ahead and changes their status all the way back down to new lead. And if we click unqualified, it's going to go ahead and change the status and update all these statuses up here as well. Now we have a section here for qualified leads. Let's go ahead and change this color to green. And let's go ahead and create a new group called unqualified leads. And we'll go ahead and change that color to red. Now, the next thing we're going to do here on the leads is create an automation so that when the status is changed to qualified, it moves them from these new leads down into this qualified group. So let's come up here to automation. And we're going to go ahead and click on add automation. And we're going to select when status changes to something. And we'll select 
select status, changes to qualified, then move item to qualified leads. Go ahead and create automation. Now we also want the same thing to happen for if the status changes to unqualified, we wanna move that item to the unqualified leads group. So the easiest and quickest way to do that, we're just gonna hit these three little dots right here, duplicate this automation and change this section here from qualified to unqualified and change the group from qualified leads to unqualified leads and hit create automation. Now let's go back to our board and make sure that these work. So let's go ahead to this John Doe and we'll change from new lead to qualified and we should see him jump down into the qualified boards just like magic. Now let's see Santa Claus here and let's say that maybe he was an unqualified lead and if we click on that we should see him come down here to the unqualified leads group. All right so those automations are pretty cool but now let's say that we have a qualified lead and we need to get it out of our leads and into our contacts. Well, we can do so by hitting this little move to contacts button. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And then we should see this lead get removed from the leads here in just a second. And if we go back over to the contacts, now we will see John Doe under here. Next, we are moving on to deals. So deals, this is where you track the entire sales process. So let's take a look at some of the different columns that we have here. So we have deal here. And if we hit this little arrow, we can see that there are some sub items. So in this example from monday.com CRM, we have a task here to reach out to Madison as well as some other tasks. Monday.com CRM also has the ability to add some sub items underneath those individual items. Now taking a look at some of these different columns. First things first, we have the stage. So here is, you know, if we click on that, we can go ahead and see the different stages of each deal. We have the owner of each deals or the responsible for each deal. We have the deal value. We have the contact for this specific deal. We have an expected close date, a close probability, and then the forecast value. And as this little information bubble here says that the forecast value is reached by multiplying the deal value and the close probability. So the forecast value column is available with the pro plan. So here back in the deals board, what we can do here is we can also add some different columns. So for this deal, we have a contact there, but maybe we want to add the account that they're associated with. So we go ahead and hit this plus sign here. And maybe we want to add the not only the counts, but also the priority. So let's go ahead and select both of those. And now we can go ahead and change the priority from high, medium and low, as well as now we have the accounts. So let's go ahead and click on this here. And right now we're getting this little error button. And the reason is because Alex Green isn't tied to an account. So real quickly, let's go to the contacts and we'll go to Alex Green and we'll go here and add account. And now that that's showing, if we come back here to deals, we can see that the account is also showing for this deal as well. We have a couple groups here. We have our active deals and we also have our closed one. But if you've ever been in any sort of sales role, you'll know that you don't win all your deals. So we need to create a group here for closed lost. So let's create a new one called closed lost and it automatically made it the right color red because losing deals is sad, but it's an inevitable part of sales. So let's go ahead and create an automation here. So whenever the status is changed to one, that it moves this deal into the closed one group and as well make a similar automation for when the status is set to lost, it goes to the closed loss. So we'll come back up here to automation. We'll go ahead and hit add automation. So when status changes to something, we'll go ahead and hit status changes to one, then move item to closed one and create automation. Again, we'll go ahead and duplicate this for the quickest way to recreate this for the closed loss. And we'll change this from when chat status changes to lost, then move item to close loss and hit create automation. Let's go back to our board and make sure that worked. Let's go ahead and change deal two here to one. And we should see that move out of active deals into the closed one group. Perfect. And we'll go ahead and move deal one. And this was lost, unfortunately. And so we should see that pop up here in the closed lost group. Okay, moving right along. Next, we're going to take a look at contacts. So contacts are the people that work for accounts. Let's go ahead and come down to contacts. Now, if you're selling B2C, then this won't apply to you. But for most people using a CRM, you're probably selling B2B. And so this relationship between contacts and accounts is very much a thing. So here we have some different columns. We have the type. You can change this to whatever you'd like, but the preset values are qualified lead, customer, partner, and vendor. And here you can select the account, which we went ahead and already made it visible earlier. We have a priority here as well as a phone and email. Now, something else
else that we can connect here as well. We can go ahead and select deals. So this will go ahead and show the deals associated with each contact. And here in this view, we have this other card view. So this is just a different way to view your different contacts if that's helpful for you. Next, we have the accounts. This is pretty straightforward. Again, we have all the different accounts. We have their domain, the different contacts at those accounts, any relevant deals and the priority, their industry, a quick description, number of employees and their headquarters location. Okay, next we're gonna get into the activities. So these are like a to-do list and you can connect them to different areas in your CRM. So as you can see, we have a couple different columns here. We have an item. So for example, here we have deal one meeting. So here we can sort of just see the different activities that we have. So here is an example activity that is set to status done. Let's go ahead and just create a new activity here and we'll call this phone call. So from here we can go ahead and select a different board to connect this activity to. So maybe we want to connect this to a contact. Since this is a phone call, we need to reach out to somebody that makes the most sense. So let's go ahead and select that. And from here, you can either select from your active contacts or you can search from your contacts. Let's go ahead and select John Doe. All right, so let's add a start time. So that'll be next Monday. End time could also be next Monday. And status is open. Activity type, we'll go ahead and click phone call. And then what you can also do too, again, if you are a sales manager, you can go ahead and assign this to somebody in your organization. Now, there is another way to go ahead and add activities, and that is at the contact level. So let's go back to contacts here, and we'll come here to this John Doe, and we'll go ahead and open that up. Now here, we can go ahead and add different activities so that anybody looking at this contact can either see the log of these activities or go ahead and add their own activities. Let's go ahead and hit add activity, and we'll go ahead and select meeting, and we'll go ahead and say, had a successful meeting with John. He is excited to move forward. And there we go. We can go ahead and see that that meeting is in there. And now we sort of have this trail of everything that was happened. If I want to go ahead and added another call summary, talked with John and he wants to buy everything. And then we can see this update in here as well. Okay. So that almost wraps up Monday CRM. The last thing that we're going to take a look out here is the sales dashboard. So Monday.com's dashboards are very powerful tools for visualizing in this case, your sales metrics and KPIs. You can customize these dashboards to include a variety of widgets that provide insights into sales performance, deal stages, team activities, and more. So if we come over here to this sales dashboard, we get a really nice eye level view of everything that is going on within our sales organization. We have our current active deals, the forecasted revenue. We have the average value of one deals. We have the actual revenue. Here we have the deals status distribution. So you can get a nice visual status status of the one deals versus the working on it deals, the lost deals and the new deals. And so again, it's just a really good way to get a very high level view of what's happening in your sales organization. And these are obviously completely customizable. So you can remove things, you can add things, you can change different settings and parameters all to fit your organization's needs. So Monday.com's sales CRM provides a robust set of tools that can revolutionize how your team handles sales. It's more than just a CRM. It's a comprehensive platform that supports your sales from lead capture to deal closure with a focus on efficiency and ease of use. With its no-code setup, extensive customization options, and powerful integration capabilities, Monday.com stands out as a top choice for businesses aiming to enhance their sales process. So whether you're a startup looking to establish your sales operations or a large company looking to streamline your sales practices, Monday.com offers the flexibility and functionality to meet your needs. To get started with Monday.com CRM, go ahead and click the link down in the description to get started with a free trial that requires no credit card. Now, I hope this video was valuable to you guys. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos just like this. Here on this channel, we make a lot of how-to guides and tutorials dedicated to helping out new entrepreneurs start their own business. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.